You're about to discover how China has just boosted its submarine fleet with the brand new YJ-19 hypersonic cruise missile. This compact, scramjet-powered system is designed for torpedo tubes and is capable of Mach 5 plus hypersonic performance from a submarine launch. In this video, we'll reveal what makes the YJ-19 unique, why it transforms undersea operations, and how it fits into China's growing hypersonic strategy, so stay tuned. The YJ-19 stands out not only as a new missile, but as a fresh design concept tailored specifically for submarines. Unlike larger Chinese hypersonic cruise missiles, such as the YJ-20 or the carrier class YJ-21, the YJ-19 is compact enough to fit into 533mm torpedo tubes, the standard across most submarine fleets worldwide. This detail might sound small, but it is revolutionary because it enables China to instantly expand the range of submarines capable of carrying hypersonic strike weapons without redesigning the boats themselves. Technically, the YJ-19 employs scramjet propulsion, meaning it uses the atmosphere as part of its fuel intake system, allowing much higher efficiency and sustained speeds. Reports suggest it is capable of Mach 5 plus hypersonic performance from a submarine launch, making it one of the fastest weapons ever designed for undersea platforms. Analysts estimate its operational range at around 500 kilometers, shorter than the YJ-21, which can exceed 1,000 kilometers, but long enough to deliver decisive reach against targets while maximizing the number of missiles carried. The slimmer body also allows submarines to load multiple YJ-19S without sacrificing torpedo or conventional cruise missile loadouts. One striking feature is its distinct white paint scheme. This might sound cosmetic, but compared to the blue-painted anti-ship missiles designed for surface launch, it signals a dedicated submarine role. Equally notable is the absence of suspension lugs, the fittings needed for aircraft or surface ship deployment, another clear marker that the missile is intended to be fired exclusively from beneath the waves. The most important outcome is flexibility. Submarines no longer depend solely on vertical launch cells, which are found only on select platforms like the newer Type 095 submarines. By embracing torpedo tube compatibility, China can upgrade its entire underwater fleet from nuclear-powered attack submarines to conventional diesel electrics with hypersonic strike capability. This transforms submarine patrols into versatile operations, where torpedoes, older cruise missiles, and next-generation hypersonics all sit side by side in the same vessel. In effect, the YJ-19 doesn't just add another missile to the roster. It redefines how submarines are armed, offering compact, high-speed performance in a way no previous Chinese missile has achieved. China's submarine fleet is among the largest in the world, and the YJ-19 integration is set to multiply its overall strike capacity. The backbone of this fleet includes six Type 093 nuclear-powered attack submarines and 33 Type 039 diesel-electric attack submarines. Until recently, these boats primarily carried torpedoes and slower cruise missiles. But with the YJ-19, they gain access to a class of weapon that delivers hypersonic speed, compact size, and flexible loadouts all from existing torpedo tubes. This upgrade is particularly impactful because it requires minimal redesign. Instead of waiting for new submarines with vertical launch cells, the Chinese Navy can retrofit its current platforms. Each Type 093 submarine already has multiple 533mm tubes, meaning they can add several YJ-19S without sacrificing other capabilities. Similarly, the smaller Type 039 fleet despite being diesel-electric, can now field high-speed hypersonic missiles alongside their conventional arsenal. The potential numbers tell the story. If all six nuclear-powered and 33 diesel-electric boats are equipped, that's nearly 40 submarines suddenly carrying hypersonic anti-ship weapons. The leap in strike density is substantial. One missile doesn't make the difference, but dozens deployed across the fleet create a layered challenge for any opponent planning to defend against submarine threats. Evidence of the YJ-19's purpose was showcased publicly during the September 3, 2025 Victory Day Parade, where it appeared alongside the YJ-17, YJ-20, and YJ-21. Each missile serves a different niche, 
air-launched, long-range surface-launched, or heavy anti-ship roles. But the YJ-19's clear distinction is its torpedo tube design. Analysts immediately noted how this bridges a critical gap. Not every submarine has vertical cells, but nearly all have torpedo tubes. For China, this isn't just about numbers, it's about strategy. A submarine armed with the YJ-19 doesn't need to surface, doesn't require specialized new equipment, and can stay hidden until the moment of launch. That stealth, paired with hypersonic speed, drastically compresses the time between launch and impact, creating a technology mix that makes defense more difficult. The result is an expanded submarine arsenal where every boat becomes a potential hypersonic platform, enhancing presence, flexibility, and overall fleet resilience. When looking beyond design and fleet integration, the YJ-19's real significance emerges in the global context. Only three nations, Russia, China, and North Korea, currently field ship-launched hypersonic anti-ship missiles. Russia was the first mover with its 3M-22 Zircon, delivered to the Navy in 2019. North Korea followed in April 2025, unveiling and testing a hypersonic anti-ship missile from the destroyer Choihyun. China has already established itself with the YJ-21, considered by many analysts to be the most advanced of its kind. Now, with the YJ-19, China adds a compact, submarine-specific option to its arsenal. The difference is profound. Submarine-launched missiles are naturally harder to detect and anticipate than those fired from surface ships or aircraft. A submerged launch platform means adversaries may not know where the missile originated until it's too late. Combined with hypersonic speeds, this reduces reaction times to seconds, not minutes, and pushes defensive systems beyond their limits. From a strategic lens, the YJ-19 strengthens China's anti-access slash area denial strategies in regions such as the South China Sea and East China Sea. Submarines can patrol vast areas quietly, and if needed, they can fire hypersonic weapons from hidden positions. This capability makes maritime routes more complex for others to secure, since detection and interception become increasingly difficult. Western observers have voiced mixed reactions. Some naval experts describe the YJ-19 as an iteration rather than a revolution, noting that range and payload are smaller than the YJ-21. Yet, even incremental steps in hypersonic technology matter, especially when paired with the stealth of a submarine. Others warn that this development underlines a shifting balance at sea, where existing defensive frameworks may no longer be sufficient. The unveiling of the YJ-19 alongside other missiles during the September 2025 parade also highlights a broader pattern. China isn't presenting one single breakthrough, but a portfolio of hypersonic systems optimized for different platforms. This creates redundancy and adaptability across air, surface, and subsurface forces. In short, the YJ-19 amplifies not just China's fleet, but the larger narrative of a world moving deeper into hypersonic competition, where stealth, speed, and compact design converge to redefine what naval technology means in practice. The unveiling of the YJ-19 marks more than a new missile. It signals a shift in how submarines project influence from beneath the seas. By combining compact design, scramjet speed, and compatibility with existing torpedo tubes, China has expanded the reach of its submarine fleet without waiting for new vessels. This isn't just about adding firepower, it's about reshaping undersea strategy worldwide. As hypersonic technology moves deeper underwater, the question remains, how will navies adapt to a future where speed and stealth collide? If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more updates on space exploration and scientific discoveries, and don't forget to leave a comment below. Also, you can visit our website, spaceinews.com. Thank you for watching, and see you next time.